I don't know how you go about preparing a broadcast when the greatest global star in sports is on the opposing side. But Will Palashik, who is the play-by-play voice on the radio for Charlotte FC, has it. Coming up tomorrow night, 8.30, Charlotte FC against Inter-Miami in the quarterfinals of the League's Cup. I have never been more excited for an event I never even knew existed until, oh, two weeks ago. Uh, Will joins us on the Adam Gold Show at uh, Willie P. Style, by the way, on Twitter, which is a dynamite Twitter handle. All right. Had, had, I know it was a – we'll get to the, the round of 16 win in a second. But holy cow, what is what is going through your mind as we're getting ready to call a game involving Lionel Messi? I'm not going to lie to you, Adam. Uh, it is a little weird. You know, I'm, I'm filling out my spotting boards uh, this morning <laughs> and uh, typing his name and, like, trying to condense – his Wikipedia page, which is like 30 <laughs> pages long into a little square that's like this big. It's like, okay, what do you, you know, I got 15-time Argentinian Player of the Year, yeah. eight-time Balloon d'Or winner. I mean, th- there's so many accolades that you could go into and say with him. And, and it, honestly, it's uh, it's a little surreal when you think about it. Uh, I, I, for one, really never have had a, an event that I've called that, that has a player of this magnitude. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, I especially the way his uh, introduction to MLS soccer, even though this is not a league match, he may have not played a league match yet. I mean, the way it's gone, he comes on as, as a sub in his first match. He scores. He has scored twice in each of the last three, including a free kick uh, that brought them even. Then he converts in penalties against the Houston Dynamo. I mean, the whole thing has just been... Uh, absolutely ridiculous. Actually, was it the Houston Dynamo? Uh, no, you guys beat the Houston Dynamo. They beat Dallas, FC they Dallas. Beat. Texas yeah. teams, they all look alike to me. Um, <laughs> but w- what do you make of how he has just taken everything by storm? I mean, guys, maybe we should have expected it, but I don't know. This is pretty special. Well, that's the thing, Adam. I don't think anybody really thought he was going to come in here and suck, right? I mean, he is the greatest <laughs> player of all time. I think that's the part of it that I think you have to kind of take with uh, a grain of salt. And, and and I don't like that people are taking, you know, pot shots at MLS saying, oh, well, look at this. He's making MLS look like a poverty league. Like, like he was doing this in the World Cup, if we remember yeah. correctly, right? So it, it's not as if this is a situation where this is all brand new and he's just, you know, making it happen like old hat. But I, I do feel like the one thing that he has done is he's galvanized a side that quite honestly was dreadful. Like they were last place in the MLS standings going into the league's cup. And I think there's a lot of attention about whether or not they'll be able to get things together in their final 11 and 12 matches uh, to get themselves possibly to a playoff berth. Ironically enough, they play Charlotte FC yeah. in the final weekend of the season. So that should be very intriguing uh, when these two teams connect back up here in the middle of October. But I'm honestly curious to see, just how they handle prosperity because I do feel like there is a sense of, you know, inevitability with them that it comes uh, with being uh, on a Lionel Messi side, but you're starting to see teams push back a little bit. You know, Orlando okay. did some a little bit, and I think Dallas also probably gave them their best fight that they had, and I'm not going to sit here and say that Charlotte FC is going to 100% win, but I think they'll put some fight out for it, and I think, you know, once you get down to this level of the tournament, it does get a little difficult. Dallas was physical. Uh, very physical with Lionel. And I, I mean, you probably have to be, you're not going to mean me. I don't know. Maybe you'd be dirty, but, uh, but you have to be physical with, but uh, it's a physical game. I mean, well, you know, I don't, I'm sure you watch a lot of soccer. I watch a ton of it. Uh, and it is a physical game. Uh, in certain leagues, it's more physical than others, but if you're not going to do that, then you're probably just going to get made fun of by Messi and his buddies, Sergio Busquets, Jordi Alba, but other guys have played well too. Uh, so an an inter has really taken it to a new level. I am I'm curious how they'd approach. Like if they were to win this league's cup, would that be enough for them? And maybe would they just not necessarily throw Messi out uh, constantly for every MLS match uh, between now and the end of the season in an effort to make the playoffs? Or is something like that worth it? 
I think they would still value the domestic tournament because they've got another tournament also that they're playing into the U.S. Open Cup. So mm-hmm. th- there's there's three different trophies they're playing for at this time, Adam. So for, from that aspect, I think they want to get all the glory possibly for him. I, I do know that there are some international windows coming up, uh, one uh, that precedes the game against Atlanta and one you know, ironically enough, that precedes the one that uh, we will see for them in the uh, decision day match as well. So I'm thinking they might limit him in those matches just because of the fact that he will be coming off of playing for uh, for his country in Argentina. And of course, they'll probably try to use him as much as possible. So his limits, his minutes might be limited. But I honestly think there's an incentive to get as much time with Messi on the pitch as possible without, of course, also uh, jeopardizing their own efforts to try and do the most they possibly can in their domestic season. Will Palashik is the play-by-play voice of Charlotte FC. 8.30 tomorrow evening against Inter-Miami down in South Florida. I'm, I am curious about this. When it was 1-0 Dynamo, um, <laughs> were you thinking, man, this was my chance to call a game with Messi? And then the crazy way, I mean, the, the, the equalizer in the 80th minute and then the absolute, I mean, gift by Houston and made it 2-1. Uh, what were you thinking at all, at all, about what might have been? I mean, how could you not at mm-hmm. that point? You know, it, it's because of the fact that uh, the goal came very early, came yeah. in about the 10th minute. So I'm sitting there thinking, you know, you got to get back into this game. Like, this is your opportunity to play Messi. And I know that we had two opportunities, you know, during the regular season, but there just seems to be a little bit extra on this one because it's a cup competition and because of the stakes that are at nature. I mean, the thing about this competition, Adam, uh, people are trying to, you know, get their arms wrapped around it. I know you were talking about it coming in in the intro. This tournament has the same prize money that an MLS Cup would have, and it also has three berths to the CONCACAF Champions Cup next uh, next winter. So okay. from that aspect, it definitely is going to have some prestige tied to it and, and definitely has some stakes tied to it. So... This almost feels bigger than the two regular season matchups that uh, at least await Charlotte FC against Lionel Messi. And, of course, this being the first time it happens, you know, I, I was sitting there in the Houston contest thinking, okay, you know, we, we got to get something back here because they dominated that game on the stat sheet. They just didn't have the final product. And it was a great ball from Jalen Lindsay to Patrick Ajiman, got behind the defense, goalkeeper came out, maybe gave him a little bit of uh, leeway there, mm-hmm. and uh, Ajiman made no mistake. And then you mentioned it being the gift. <laughs> I still, I've, I've watched it at least 27 times, <laughs> and I still can't figure out how the heck that center back decided it was okay to pass it back to the goalkeeper because based on where the goalkeeper was, uh, I don't know why he thought that was a good pass, but hey, you know, their misfortune is our, our treasure. He tucked it, uh, tucked it right. <laughs> right in by the near post, I think. Right? It was. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't as bad as the one that was scored in the in the Dallas game too, where the guy headed uh, it I in. Believe, Taylor Twelman said it was like a blood rush to the head, and I was actually texting back and forth with Jake Ziven, who does uh, the play-by-play on the TV side for it, and he said, man, that was one, too, that uh, really left the, the head scratching. It was almost like he was trying to score on his yeah. own goalie there. It was no, really, no really question. rather bizarre. He looked like he was the intended target of the messy cross. Um, we're talking with Will Palaszczuk, the play-by-play voice of Charlotte FC. So, goalkeeper, Christian Kalina, has he, uh, has he approached in this one? Uh, is he, is he excited? I mean, I'm sure something like this you have to be excited about. He definitely is. And I think, you know, we, we talked with him a little bit um, on Thursday after the penalty shoot, shootout victory over uh, Cruz Azul. It was very cool to see him get three penalty saves in that, uh, in that contest. He had two earlier on. Uh, the unique, unique nature of this tournament is that after 90 minutes, it goes straight to penalties. So yeah. uh, that is a situation that I feel like uh, puts a little bit different kind of flavor on this tournament. So it's a way to give you some confidence. Uh, it's unfortunate that he gave up the goal early, but I think that wasn't necessarily his fault. But I think he salivates at something like this, and I think it'll be very interesting to see how Charlotte FC approaches it defensively. They are going to be, unfortunately, down one of their main defenders, Nathan Byrne, who was very good in each of the last two contests, had a big recovery run against Cruz Azul to keep that game nil-nil, and had a couple of also great moments in the game against Houston as well, but unfortunately, yellow card suspension has him out of this one, so uh, I'll be curious to see how Charlotte FC lines their people up. We'll, uh, we'll get a little bit of a sense of that when we talk to Christian Latanzi later on today. Before we uh, before we let Will Palasha go, uh, two very quick things. One, just in case... Messi continues his streak. Do you have anything 
Do you have a, a, a goal call planned, or is it how, how are you going to handle that? I'm just going to handle it organically. You know, mm-hmm. people have been asking me if I'm going to give uh, give Messi a little extra prop on that. I mean, it, it's a Charlotte FC call at the end of the day. You know, right. we, we we want Charlotte FC to win. And uh, as, as much as I want to, you know, appreciate what he is, uh, at the end of the day, he is still the opposition. So uh, far be it for me to sit here and, and glory on something that doesn't help our club. Uh, that, that's that's very good. Uh, but the other way, it's good for the resume tape. I don't know. It's just That's me true. thinking about it uh, true. In, <laughs> in, true. in that particular way. And there was supposed to be a match uh, in Miami on the 20th, but that's been pushed mm-hmm. back because of this tournament because one of these two clubs is going to go adv- is going to advance. So that game isn't going to be played on time. We don't know when that's going to be rescheduled. And then in October, back here in Charlotte uh, mm-hmm. at Bank of America Stadium, I don't know if you are if you even want to adjust this. Is there going to be natural grass put down for that match? They're saying there's not going to be, and uh, I find it interesting, too, that uh, they actually just agreed to have the Mexican national team play in uh, the previous weekend. Uh, they're taking on Ghana as part of their international friendly series, and Mexico actually agreed to play on turf as well. Uh, I think the the intonation from Charlotte has always been they want to play the uh, the game against Messi on turf. Uh, he's not said anything expressly about not wanting to play on turf. I think this is all something that's coming okay. from potentially the commissioner's office. Uh, the commissioner has made it very clear he's not a fan of multi-use facilities and not necessarily a fan of turf. So I think he it's more of maybe his own agenda pushing somewhat, so to speak. And I'm not going to try to put words in, in the commissioner's mouth, but it doesn't necessarily come from Messi directly. Uh, he doesn't really do a lot of media, so no. he hasn't really addressed it uh, particularly in, in, that, in that sense. But at least from the standpoint of where I'm sitting, I think it's going to be turf, and uh, and they're expecting Messi to play. So yeah. I'll I'll, I'll uh, be surprised if it doesn't happen that way. Messi's too busy shopping at Publix. That's uh, right? that's all we know. Uh, and also, he's he's a showman too. Yeah. Like I don't think he's going to want to necessarily let down the fans who have paid you know upwards of you know five hundred dollars to go see him like that. I don't think he's that kind of guy. And my favorite thing about this whole experience has been it just seems like Lionel Messi is having a ton of fun doing what he is doing. He just looks like he is enjoying the process and he is bringing a lot of joy to the game, and that's what it's all about. Uh, also winning. Uh, Will Palashik, the play-by-play voice of Charlotte FC, at Willie P. Style on X. Thanks, man. Have a good time tomorrow night. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Adam. Always appreciate it.